today is the second Sunday after Easter. We'll be here again in, in Texas and Fort Hood here. And the epistle for this second Sunday after Easter is taken from the first epistle of St. Peter, chapter 2. Dearly beloved, Christ suffered for us, leaving you an example that you should follow his steps. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Who, when he was reviled, did not revile. When he suffered, he threatened not, but delivered himself to him that judged him unjustly. Who his own self bore our sins and his body upon the tree, that we, being dead to sin, should live to justice, by whose stripes you were healed. For you were a sheep going astray, but you are now converted to the shepherd and bishop of your souls. And then the gospel. He went to St. John, chapter 10. At that time, Jesus said to the Pharisees, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for his sheep. But the hireling, and he that is not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep and flyeth. And the wolf catcheth and scattereth the sheep. And the hireling flyeth, because he is a hireling. And he hath no care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know mine, and mine know me. As the Father knoweth me, and I know the Father, and I laid out my life for my sheep. And other sheep I have that are not of this fold, them also I must bring. And they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. That's for the words of today's holy God. Sunday is called Good Shepherd Sunday, and that the mystery of the shepherd is linked up very tightly with the mystery of the sheep. One thing to understand about sheep is that sheep are basically just like human beings. They're really stupid. <laughs> and that at each age, we find that sheep get more dumb. We're in an age now in which the world is filled with more sheep, more sheep-like sheep than there have ever been before. The sheep are being told foolish lies, and the sheep are afraid, and their fear that is being experienced now is described by the sick, by the Holy Ghost, as I mentioned a few days ago, in the Book of Wisdom, chapter 17, where it describes the three days of darkness. We know that towards the end of the world, there are many prophecies that the three days of darkness will come back. Now in Egypt, there were three days of darkness, and it was the tenth, it was the ninth plague. The tenth plague would be the plague of the uh, killing of the firstborn. And the ninth plague was worse than the eight plagues that came before it. And what's interesting about the plague, we had the plague of the frogs, the plague of locusts, uh, we, had, we had the plague of the water turning into blood. And these all things really happened. And these plagues caused great sorrow to the people of Egypt. And they went to the Pharaoh and said, Pharaoh, these sorrows are upon us because you have trapped the people of God. You will not allow the true people of God to go. And Pharaoh, after each one of these plagues, said, I will let the people go. And every time he said, I will let the people go, his heart was hardened. And he changed his mind, and he would not let them go. And the ninth plague of all the ten plagues is the most interesting of the plagues, because it is more serious to the Egyptians than the eight plagues that came before it. And this plague we're in right now, called the coronavirus, is very similar to the ninth plague. As I mentioned many times, I've been traveling around the United States the last few since uh, since this coronavirus broke out, and uh, you know, I was in the Northwest where they said it was really bad there, then I was in the Southwest, I was down in California, and up in Washington, and up in New York, and in New Jersey, and New England, and also in the central part of the United States, now down here in Texas, and I'm on a great journey to try to find the virus. No luck so far. Can't find the virus. But what's interesting though, is that what was the effect of this virus? It is a stage of darkness in the sheep. The Holy Ghost says in, the, in, in chapter 17 of the book of wisdom that these three days were darkness. 
But it was darkness only over Egypt. It wasn't like nighttime. At nighttime, when you walk outside, it's dark on a whole half of the planet. It's dark for us, and it's dark for the cows, and it's dark for the rocks, and it's dark for the trees. It's dark for everything. And everything has to react to the dark. Some things do well in the dark. The animals that hunt at that time, other things do badly in the dark. But it's a real darkness that is around us. But the three days of darkness were not like that. The three days of darkness were darkness only for the Egyptians. And only in their eyes. There was not a real darkness. The sign was shining brightly. And the animals were walking around. And everything was normal, but they were in complete darkness. The kind of darkness that you have, if you go to Kentucky or my home, you go down to Mammoth Cave, you can go inside the cave, and inside the cave you turn off the lights, and it is total darkness. There is no light of any kind. You can't see the, the, the hand in front of your face. Total darkness. The scripture tells us, and they had darkness, but there were no devils running around. There was no bad thing happening. But they were filled with a dread that is laughable. That is what the scripture says about the Egyptians. They were filled with a dread that is laughable. For when they heard the rustling of the trees, which they have heard thousands of times, they thought it was ghosts. A man was a farmer in his field, and he was in his field, and he had been to thousands of times. And when the darkness hit, he was not able to go back to his house. For three days he was in terror in the darkness, and many people died from the darkness. But if you were a cow walking by, if you were a, a, a sheep walking by, you would see this terrified Egyptian shriveling on the ground. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Absolutely terrified. When they heard moo, they thought, oh no, I'm a farmer. I've never heard that before in my life. <laughs> and they were petrified. And they died from the sounds of farmers died of terror from the sound of a cow. In the 1930s, there was a radio broadcast called The War of the Worlds. The War of the Worlds was just a radio broadcast about the Martians attacking the Earth, announced by Orson Welles. And it was just a show. But he did it in the form of an actual a brute newscaster speaking. And so many millions of Americans thought the Martians are really attacking. There was a farmer in New Jersey. Well, they got no business having farms anyway. There was a farmer in New Jersey. It was about a 60-year-old man, grandpa. And he thought he heard that the Martians were coming. He ran outside of his house. And he saw a Martian ship, and he shot at it with his gun. The Martian ship was a water tower that had been sitting there for 40 years in his backyard. But when he walked out, he said, there's the Martians. And he shot at the Martians. Later on, they took a picture of him in front of the water tower that he had shot a hole into. He became so afraid that he thought a water tower was a Martian. And many years ago in the Old Testament, the Egyptians were terrified because they could not see. You know that of all the senses that we have as human beings, the most important one is a sense of sight. We can see the things around us, and they could not see. And they couldn't see the things around them, and so they were terrified because they could not see. And now we are in an age of darkness. And why are we in an age of darkness? Because people don't know the truth. If you don't know the truth, if you can't see the things the way that they really are, then you are in darkness. And when you're in darkness, you may hear the rust of the trees and become afraid. Meanwhile, a real monster comes upon you, and you don't hear, and you don't sense, and you're not afraid. You're not afraid of the things you should be afraid of, and you are afraid of the things you should not be afraid of. And the Book of Wisdom tells us, and the Fathers tell us, that some of the Egyptians died during those three days of darkness. They died of terror. Right now, during this coronavirus, the virus is not as bad as the regular flu, and very few people have the actual diagnosis of the virus. Probably millions have already gotten it. Whoever got a cold this year got the virus. 
It is, and it, it's, it's the nothing, the virus, even though it's a man-made thing, and that there are less people dying from it than die from the regular flu, and yet there is a terror that has gone around the earth. And this terror has caused a massive increase in the last couple of months, a massive spiking globally of suicides, massive increase of suicides, massive increase of domestic violence, massive increase of all kinds of depression, massive increase of terror amongst our people. They're terrified of everything. Now we're calling, I saw at the gas station yesterday, and now know that the UPS driver is a hero. He's a hero because he delivers packages. What a brave man. He's a hero. A hero is a man that delivers packages. We used to call heroes guys that, you know, jump out of airplanes and go into the middle of the war to save lives and fight against 100,000 enemies. Now a hero is somebody that, here's your package. What has happened to us? Now the fact is, it turns out that we are still sheep, and shepherds are supposed to take care of the sheep, and shepherds are supposed to love the sheep, and shepherds are supposed to pull the sheep together. And what do we have a problem in the world today? That the sheep are easily believing lies, and why are they easily believing lies? Because they do not know the truth, because they do not know the sound of the shepherd. Our Lord Jesus Christ says, I am the good shepherd, and I know mine, and mine know me. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd is around his sheep. The good shepherd speaks to his sheep. The sheep listen to the shepherd, and they know his voice. It was a custom in the, in, in the Middle East, and today I noticed very much in India, being a priest in India, all the animals wander the streets. There are no fences. All the cows mixed together, all the sheep mixed together, all the chickens mixed together. But everybody, every one of them goes to their exact home every night. None of them go to the wrong home. And the shepherd used to stand out with a thousand sheep, and he would make his cry and make his call, and only his sheep would come out of the sheepfold, and the other shepherds would keep the other sheep would keep eating the grass. Only his sheep came because they recognized the sound. And now we have a test. From the Ignatian Retreat, rule number seven and rule number eight of the second week of the Ignatian Retreat. Actually, rule number seven. What spirit do we listen to? Rule number seven is a litmus test spirit. And right now, the rule, and this is the rule we're living in right now in our coronavirus test. This is rule number seven being applied to the whole world, both by the good angel, who is a recipient, who is a follower of God, and by the bad angel who is a follower of Satan. This is just a test. Where do you stand right now? Not where you're going to be tomorrow. Not where were you yesterday. Who is your friend right now? Who do you listen to right now? Who do you believe in right now? And St. Ignatius said, five or 400 years, almost 500 years ago, he said, whichever spirit we listen to, he comes into us like water entering a sponge. Water hits a sponge, and it makes no noise. It's absorbed very quickly. The spirit we listen to quietly comes into us, and he's absorbed. But is it the good spirit of God, of Christ, the good angel on our right shoulders? Or is it the devil who stands on our left shoulders? Which angel do we listen to? Now, the spirit that we do not listen to, he comes in like water hitting a rock. Water hits a rock, and it's sharp and noisy, and it doesn't penetrate the rock. It disturbs the rock. And so what we experienced in the last two months is the worldwide application of rule number seven of the second week of the spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius. What spirit do we listen to? Now there's a trouble in the world. There's crisis in the world. They say that there is a virus. They say it's going to kill the whole earth. What is a natural thing to do? The first thing we do when we discover there's a plague, if there really is a plague, or even we believe there is a plague, what is the right thing to do? The first thing to do is go to God. Now there are 7 billion people on the planet. How many of them have gone to God? Not only have they not gone to God, what has happened? The ministers of God... The chief shepherd, who is called the Holy Father in Rome, he realized that there was a plague, and he locked the doors of the church called the Vatican. And they said, we're going to have a virtual mass. 
You might need a heart surgery one day. I'm going to give you a virtual surgery. You stay in your room, and I'll be in the hospital. I'll take the knife, and no, not there, another way. Looks like I just catch this movie real quick. Now, you may take the knife, cut your own heart out. I'm going to give you a virtual surgery. Can you have a virtual surgery? Can you have a virtual hamburger? Might cost a lot of money because you can pay with your credit card. It just won't feed you. You can't have a virtual hamburger. You can't have a virtual sh uh, uh, surgery. You can't live a virtual life on a computer. And the Holy Father says, no, we're going to be separated from our own sheep. The shepherd says, it's unsafe. And therefore, we've got to protect the shepherds. Because what's the point? If all the shepherds get the virus and die, well, then how can they be shepherds anymore? So we've got to protect the shepherds. We're going to close the doors of the church. Now, the water, the spirit came down and said, there is a virus across the whole world. It's the spirit of Bill Gates. Is he a saint? It's the spirit of George Soros. Is he a saint? It's the spirit of these modern scientists of the World Health Organization. God is telling you, 500 years ago, there began a revolution. Galileo, Galilei. Galileo, the very wise man, he stood up and said 500 years ago, the Bible is the first authority in the things of God and in spiritual things, but it's the last authority in the things of science. I love the sacred scripture when it tells me about going to heaven, but I can't follow the scripture when it tells me how the heavens go. And there began a revolution, which was called at that time the Copernican Revolution. But because there's too many syllables for modern people, short circuits their brain, Copernicus was a Catholic priest, of course, it was all bad things started by a Catholic priest. Copernicus was a Catholic priest. And he wrote a book, How the Earth is Not the, the Center of the Universe, but the Sun is, and that we have to follow science, because science knows better than the Pope, and the science knows better than the bishops, and the science knows better than the sacred scripture, and the science knows better than God. But we still don't hate God. And there began a revolution, which was originally called the Scientific Revolution, but is now called the Scientific Revolution. What happens when the wheel is turned? Now, 500 years ago, if there was a virus, 500 years ago, if there was a plague, and there were plagues, and 500 years ago, there was a crisis, what did they do? The souls went to God. And they went to the church for the answer. And what happened? The plague ended and peace returned to the world. But now the revolution is complete. And where do the souls turn? To their new shepherds, to their new lords, to their new leaders who are the scientists. We don't even know their names. At least you know the Pope lives in Rome. At least you know the bishops in the diocese. At least you know the priests in the church. Well, who are the scientists that rule us? The revolution is complete. And the proof of the revolution is complete is a test of 2020. How many people believe that God is God? And how many people are going to go to God and say, I want to see God. I want God to be the answer to the coronavirus. I want God to be the answer to the problems of my marriage. I want God to be the answer to the problems of my economy. And my lost job, God will be the answer of my lack of food and my, and my difficulties. And dip, God is the one who's going to provide me with my daily bread. There was a prayer Jesus Christ taught us once upon a time where he said, speak to our Father who is in heaven. Hallow his name. And he will give us our daily bread. But now our daily bread comes from a check from Trump. It used to be from Obama. That was a bad check. The Trump check, that's a good check. So now we've got a Trump check. It says this Trump change, no problem. A little bit of a Trump check, that's a good check. Obama check, that was a bad check. But when we're going to be saved by the state, the Father, the Shepherd is going to feed us. The sheep have already changed their Shepherd. The sheep no longer look to Christ, and they don't want Christ and they don't think that Christ is the answer, and they're not looking to the priest, 
They're not looking to the bishop, and they're not looking to the pope, which you don't want to right now. This pope is very bad, but he's still representative of God, and he has to repent, pray for his repentance. But the fact is, we are not turning to the shepherds. The real shepherds have turned away from us. They've locked the doors of the church. And so we turn to the false shepherds. And the false shepherds are the scientists. And they have decided that we know what's best for you. Your safety. You can't walk into the gas station here and the soldier is going to hand you a, uh, a, a wipe, a wipey thing. What do you call it? And you're going to wipe off all the health off your hands and you're going to make a safe journey into the convenience store. You've got to wear a mask. You've got to be safe. We used to have to go to the confession. Now you've got to wear a mask. We used to have to be sorry for our sins. Now you've got to be sorry for coughing. That's the most serious sin you can commit. You've got to be sorry for being around other people. We used to preach about charity. Charity equals to go to where the sick man is. If you know that one of the seven corporal works of mercy is visit the sick. No, you can't visit the sick because it's not safe. The, the hospitals are locked. And why are they locked? Because the sheep have decided that they want a different shepherd and they are listening to that shepherd. It is true, the shepherd is wicked. The Holy Father is wicked. The bishops are not doing their duty and they are hirelings. There, but remember what our Lord Jesus Christ said, or the Holy Ghost said in Ezekiel chapter 34. He said, there is a time of wicked shepherds. That's the first half of the chapter. You shepherds have been wicked, and all the sheep are being lost, and I will punish you shepherds because of how many sheep are lost. And the second half of the chapter, what does the Holy Ghost say? You sheep, you are not better than the shepherds. Because the fat sheep have driven away the lean sheep. And the sheep have gone into the waters and drunk the waters. And then they muddied the waters with their feet. That the other sheep will come and drink dirty waters. For the sheep are just as wicked as the shepherds. Now in this test of the last two months, last month and a half. We are seeing where are the shepherds. Well they are in hiding. They are hirelings. Except for the wicked ones. And who are the shepherds that we're looking to amongst the sheep? Well, Fauci. That little guy is so smart. He knows all about the HIV virus, helped develop it, make millions of people die. Now he knows about the coronavirus. He's going to make us safe by making sure that our immune systems are completely wiped out. Is he going to make us safe? No, he isn't. The sheep are looking to the wrong shepherd. But the sheep are looking to the wrong shepherd. Yes, the shepherds, the true shepherds are wicked. The true shepherds have not done their duty. But what has happened? The sheep are looking in the wrong directions also. The sheep cannot claim total innocence. For they have turned their ears to the TV. They've turned their ears to CNN. They've turned their ears to National Proletariat Radio. They have turned their ears to all of the modern world, teaching them lies. And they have heaped up themselves liars, telling them what they want to hear. And now the liars are telling them what the liars want them to do. And what is happening? They are listening to the liars. And not returning to God. Many, uh, one man that would break with one man already had a case already, bringing Holy Communion. Man requested me to bring him a confession in Holy Communion. I brought him a confession. He refused to receive Holy Communion because he would have to get within six feet. So the Blessed Sacrament I had was not able to give him Holy Communion. He refused the Holy Communion. In some churches, they have canceled Holy Communion because of the fact that they, you have to get close to the priests. Some priests have decided to have the confessions only make sure you're seven feet away. You've got to screen your confession. And the sick calls have been canceled. No sick calls. Why? Because the God of science has taken over the God of creation who created science. God is the one who made the world in six days. He made it absolutely perfect. He made it beautiful. He knows exactly how to fix things. And what does God do? God controls all things. Not the scientists. Not these modern foolish scientists. 
Now, when you put yourselves into the hands of the scientists, what's going to happen? You're going to be dissected. You're going to receive a vaccine. You're going to receive injections. You're going to become like a, 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 a part of a science experiment, and your humanity is going to be taken from you, and your freedom is going to be taken from you. You're going to be destroyed. Let the sheep no longer listen to the false shepherds. That's one of the things that must happen on this day. Let the sheep no longer listen to the false shepherds. They listen to the false shepherds. What is happening? Fear is in their life. Death is in their life. Global control of the one world is in their life. And they are not running to Christ. When there is a crisis, you run to Christ. No matter what the crisis is. If the crisis is a danger to your life, you go to Christ. If the crisis is you lost your, your shoes, what do you do? You go to St. Anthony. Anthony, find my shoes. Anthony is the solution to lost things. Christ is the solution to every sickness and every trouble and every difficulty. And we have to turn to Christ. And the shepherds are supposed to guide us to Christ. That's what the shepherds are supposed to do. They're supposed to say, what is the answer to the, to the troubles in the world? The answer to the troubles in the world is Christ, Christ, and Christ. There is no other answer. And now they're going to try to find another answer besides Christ. And for the last 500 years, souls have been more and more and more turning away from God. More and more and more listening to the wrong shepherds. And now the sheep no longer want to go to the true shepherd. But there are still sheep that want the true shepherd. And Christ will always find a way to get them. Always find a way to save them. For many sheep I have are out of this fold. And them also I must bring into this fold. Remember that in our church... Our Holy Roman Catholic Church, we are always apostolic. We want to save the sheep that we have in our sheepfold, but then we also want to go out and take the other sheep that are lost in the wilderness and pull them into the sheepfold. The heart that we must have is the heart of the shepherd who loves his sheep and is ready to lay down his life for his sheep, but then he also wants to go and increase the flock and bring all the lost sheep into his flock. And this is the spirit of our church. And Pope Francis has forgotten it. And the bishops have forgotten it. They were the first ones to close the churches. You don't close the churches. They didn't come with guns to make us close the churches. They closed the churches of their own free will. What did Pope Gregory the Great do in a great plague in, in Rome? He gathered all the people together, and they went on a pilgrimage, and they went on a pilgrimage and prayed to St. Michael that this plague be taken away. And the end of the pilgrimage, the plague was taken away. And also, what are, why does God allow there to be plagues? In order to remind, to remind us to return to Him. To remind us to repent. So let us repent and return to God. That's what we're supposed to do. Today is Good Shepherd Sunday. And we're supposed to pray, not only for the shepherd, primarily for the shepherd today. And God said as good shepherds, that we are priests and bishops that must love their flock. We are finding now how much and how little Sheep and shepherds love their flock, making themselves safe, putting themselves at a distance, making sure that they're more tuned to what the law is requiring or what they think the law is requiring, even though the law is not even really requiring it. They're going above and beyond. And then rather than the needs of the sheep, we must go out to the lost sheep. We must go out and take care of the sheep. So pray for the shepherds. And then the sheep also must do an examination of conscience. Because our Lord Jesus Christ said, I am the good shepherd, I know mine, and mine know me. But what has happened towards the end of the world, the sheep are going to have itching ears, and the sheep are going to listen to another shepherd. And today is a test, today is in this time of this coronavirus, a test of how many people are listening to the false lies, of the false shepherd of modern science, which is not run by scientists. It's run by those who wish to prepare the world for the Antichrist. And the one worlders. That's what it's run by. But those that are listening to the false word of scientists, and those listening to the church. There must be more souls listening to the church and less souls listening to the, to the, to the false word of the, of the false lies of the scientists. They're telling governments what to do. They're telling kings what to do. They're telling armies what to do. That's the duty of the Pope. The Pope is supposed to excommunicate kings. The Pope is supposed to direct those who are not doing the following the law of God because they're not following the law of God. But now the scientist decides what he believes is safe, what fits into his little model, whatever his model is, and there's always an agenda behind it. And it's not the agenda of Christ. It's the agenda of Antichrist. And remember, there are only two kingdoms. The kingdom of Christ, which is his Holy Roman Catholic Church, 
and the kingdom of Satan, which is everything else. There are not three kingdoms, four kingdoms, five kingdoms. There are only two kingdoms. And there are only two masters. The one master is the Lord Jesus Christ. And the other master is Satan. And there are not three masters. And so how many souls today who claim to follow Christ are more worried about the health of their bodies than the health of their souls? How many, how, many, how many are more worried about what the scientist has to say and the doctor has to say? And they're not listening to the real doctors, they're listening to these idiot doctors who are saying lies. The real doctors in the field are saying, we don't have, we're closing our hospital's floors. We're laying off nurses, we're laying off doctors, and we, we're not able to take care of the people because we don't have enough doctors, and the doctors are having to quit, and people are not coming in, the, the hospitals are closing, clinics are closing. They, 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 they are, they're, 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 they're not in a position to deal with what's going to be coming back to normal. There needs to be a return to quote-unquote normal, but normal means return to God. And the souls are not even now returning to God. Here we are in our deathbeds having struggles that are not returning to God. Let the sheep return to God. Let the sheep turn on their ears and listen to the correct shepherd who is Christ and not the false shepherds. So in any case... We pray with the shepherd and the sheep on this uh, Sunday of Good Shepherd, uh, and that, uh, that we turn our ears to the correct shepherd and, and not to the modern shepherd. And this is a little test. In the last few weeks, what have been my principal worries? Have I been worried about my separation from God? Have I been worried about the future of my living the faith in this wicked modern world? Have I been worried about my health and worried about my safety? worried about the wrong things. What worries have been in my heart? And if they've been the wrong worries, let's turn them back to the correct worries. And let God be back first in the life. Make sure the scapular is always on you. Make sure the rosary is always in your hands and always in your pocket. And then we say the rosary. We stay of the true Holy Roman Catholic faith and don't fall with errors and heresies of modernism and all the garbage going on in the world today. And not, not listen to the lies of modern science, but rather to the truth that comes from Christ. The truth that comes from Christ. And again, close that God bless you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.